So hey everyone and welcome back and today I'm going to be showing you how to do the beginner style or raw style in Premiere Pro. We are going to be using two plugins, the first one is called Sapphire and the second is optional but it's called RSMB. You do not need it unless you are going to add motion blur onto your clips so yeah. Anyways let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is have your clips ready. I've got mine right here and each of these clips are 15 frames long. Now first of all you want to search for the warp transform effect, the one right here. S underscore warp transform and drag it onto the clip. We are going to create a scale out and also a scale in so you want to keyframe the z dist and scale it to around 0.5 head about nine keyframes ahead and set it to 0.9 and once you have done that what you want to do is click on this arrow next to the stopwatch which will bring this graph down and what you want to do is click on the second keyframe and you want to pull this handle all the way to the left make sure it's not too high or too low just on level right there and let go and once it looks like this what you want to do is head towards the end of the clip just one keyframe back otherwise if you head all the way towards the end it doesn't actually show the keyframe so just head about here and what you want to do is set it back to 0.5 zoom in onto the keyframe so i'm just going to pull this handle to zoom in uh, click on the second keyframe and what you want to do is pull this handle to the right side instead so just like so and there you go now what you want to do next is do the same for the final keyframe but you only need to pull it a little bit so i'm just going to click and drag it just about there and now if i do play it back you can see that we have our scale out and scale in you can now minimize this effect by clicking this arrow over here next up we are going to add a shake so search for the s shake effect and just drag it onto your clip and what you want to do is copy down my settings so for the main frequency you want to set that to three if you scroll down you're going to see x XYZ and also the tilt shake. If you do open up the X shake, you want to set the rand amp to 100 and then move on to the Y shake and do the same. So just change it to 100. You want to leave the Z shake, we're not going to mess with that, but you want to open up the tilt shake. And what you want to do over here is change the tilt wave amp to 0.5 and underneath it the tilt wave frequency should be 1. So now your shake is ready and we're going to copy and paste this onto every single clip later on. Now moving on to the second clip, you don't have to add the warp transform effect and instead what you can do is just copy and paste the one we made before. So if you do go back onto the first clip and just click on, if you just right click and then click on copy and then head over to the second clip and right click again and click on paste it's going to paste in the scales that we just made but we're going to make some changes so what you want to do is expand it once again by clicking on the arrow head over to the first keyframe and you want to set it to 1.2 head towards the middle keyframe and you want to set that to 0.75 so just do that and then the final one should be set back to one so you can just click that and it'll just reset it now if you do head over to the start you're going to see that there's a lot of black bars around the sides what you need to do is simply scroll down to wrap x and also wrap y and you want to click this over here and click on reflect for both of these and it's going to add a reflection around the clip so yeah head back to the first clip we can also minimize this shake effect and then just right click copy head over to the second clip right click and then paste and now we have the shake onto the second clip now we still need to make some changes to the second clip so if we do head over to the middle where the second keyframe is you want to keyframe the shift xy head towards the end so around here above the other keyframe and you want to change it to 1215 and by doing that what it's going to do is push it towards the left it will look different for you depending on what your composition size is and you want to do the same thing with the graph so just click on the arrow click on the second keyframe and then just pull the handle all the way to the left you want to do the same for this one as well so just pull it towards the right just like there head back to the middle and you want to keyframe the rotation head towards the end and set the rotation to 10 and what we're going to do is also graph this so once again click the arrow and then just pull it all the way to the right make some minor adjustments and there you go so now it should look something like this moving on to the next one you want to do the exact same thing as we've done previously so just copy and paste the warp transform effect onto the next clip so the one from the second one to the new one open up and we're going to make some adjustments head towards the beginning and you want to change the shift xy to 100 which will add a keyframe graph that as well as we've done before so just pull it all the way to the left and the same goes for the other side as well head to the final keyframe and you want to set that to around 660 as for the z disk the first keyframe should be 0.5 the second one should be 0.5 9 and the final one should be i think it was 1.1 and as for the rotation you're going to add another one at the beginning set to negative 10 get rid of the last one because we need to graph it and it's not really working so i'm just going to get rid of it 
and then just graph this one pull it all the way to the left and also on the other side just like that head to the end and set it back to negative 10 but you also want to graph this so just pull it to the right side and there you go and so far you should get something that looks like this once again before we move on we need to copy and paste the effect onto the new one so just like that now first of all for the shift xy what you want to do is delete the final keyframe and then you want to change the first keyframe to 1840 and for the z disk what you need to do is head over to the third keyframe and set that to 1.2 and also by the way you probably noticed but i haven't been messing with any of the graphs because some of them are already fine we've already changed them from previous clips but anyways once you have changed that to 1.2 you want to move on to the rotation once again change the first keyframe to 10 and also delete the final keyframe on rotation add on the s shake effect and so far it should look something like this for the final clip all we need to do is just copy and paste what we did on the first one so head over to the first one you did and you want to just copy and paste both of these effects so all you need to do is just hold control on your keyboard i think it's command if you're on mac and just highlight all of these effects and just copy it and paste it onto the new clip so what you can do is leave it as this and you're pretty much done but you can also add the rsmb effect all you need to do is create an adjustment layer and drag it on top if you do search for the rsmb effect and just drag the rsmb pro effect onto the adjustment layer it will take a while to play it back since it's going to lag a little but this is going to add motion blur onto your clips to make it smoother but other than that that's all you need to do so thank you for watching have a great day and i will see you next time so yeah peace